Aaron, how would you describe the rivalry with Ireland? And has it become quite tense over the last couple of years? Um, well, my whole black career, I've had um, very tough encounters against Ireland. Um, they were who I debuted against, so it's very fond memories for me. Um, and yeah, ups and downs, wins and losses. But um, they're a great team and they're the best team in the world. And we're just really excited about the challenge and um, can't wait. Aaron, are we talking beers after the match with this sort of team, or do you, or do you think you might sort of <laughs> keep it separate after this one? Um, I think there's a mutual respect there, uh, for sure. Jersey changes, and um, obviously there's a lot of experience in both groups, guys who have played each other a lot. Um, so I'd say there'd be a little bit of mingling, but um, I think everyone knows the stakes of what's riding on this game. Um, I know in 2019 there was quite good camaraderie afterwards, um, connecting, um, so um, I wouldn't call it a hatred or anything like that. There's a definite mutual respect, two nations, two proud nations, um, so I'd say there'd be respect there, but happiness and pain for how the result goes. Uh, Jason, just very quickly, a question on behalf of Keith Earls. I was just wondering what sort of inside knowledge Joe Schmidt's been able to bring to your progresses for this one. Um, no, we, Joe's been great, just um, driving our game and what we can do better. He's um, really challenged the group, as he, you know, as we all have as coaches, um, on how the All Blacks can be better. So, hasn't really been any of that chat, to be fair. <coughs> And just ask Aaron and Rico just to talk about the impact Joe has had since joining last year, and maybe if you could pick one area of your game you defend in particular. Uh, yeah, I think Joe's just he he sees the game in a in a very detailed view and I think um, especially with us backs you know his his work in sort of noticing trends and um, other teams attack and defences is what sort of separates him and just the detail he, he goes into and I think for us um, trying to find those one percenters is, can be quite hard but with Joe um, he makes you know the, the sort of view of the game um, a lot easier by, by the way he understands it so um, yeah he's definitely helped us um, quite a bit. Yeah, I agree, Rico. Um, a lot of experience. Um, always has clips to show you if you ask. So you've got to be careful what you ask him because uh, <laughs> it could cost you 20 minutes. But um, he's been, well, the last sort of 18 months, I've really enjoyed connecting with him. As Rico said, he sees little things in the game that isn't anything extra. He sees the positives in your own skill sets and sort of doubles down on that. And uh, a lot of the stuff is a lot around just effort and and work. Uh, Jace, can you just uh, update us on Terrell's situation? Obviously, we heard a couple of days ago that he'd been getting better every day. It was a good chance to play. Um, how is he now, and uh, will you consider the selection? Yeah, he's uh, he's trained really well today. Got through what he needed to, and definitely he'll be uh, considered for selection. Uh, just, I mean, you know, just speak to that in terms of the uh, you know having all your all your, all your bullets in your gun, so to speak, important? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you need, you know, when you head into a final, uh, which it is, it is a final, obviously, it's um, it's important that you, you know, if you you got the luxury, I guess, of picking from a squad that's uh, fully available um, is where you want to be. So you're always going to get niggles, but it's great that, obviously, in this um, player's point of view, in, in regards to Lowy, it's great that he's um, got through today and, you know, we have a pretty high intensive training on Thursday, so he'll need to tuck that off as well. And Aaron, um, Ireland team, um, you speak about the respect you have, and that's clear. A team that's, you know, had the wood over you a little bit. Um, I think they've won th three of the last four, four of the last six. How many teams get that record against the All Blacks? Are they, uh, I think one of your teammates at the start of the week said they were the benchmark in the game now. I mean, do you rightfully regard them as a team, you know, you playing the level you've got to get to now? Yeah, for sure. They've heard that right. Um, their record in the last two years has really proved that. But um, we're at a World Cup. Um, we're playing in a final and it's all on the line. And yeah, history's history and history's going to get created on Saturday. And we'll see who comes out on top. Just behind you, Mark. 
uh, wood for Rico and Aaron. Aaron, we'll start with you, just a follow up to that. Does last year matter in terms of what happened in the series, or do you view this as a totally separate thing? And how much hurt is in the group of what Ireland did for the Rico's? Um, last year matters in a sense of taking the learnings, but I believe we're a totally different team to um, July last year. Um, got new coaches, and as a group, um, that series really galvanised us. And yeah, I can't wait for Saturday to see what happens. And we go as well. Same question: Is there is there hurt in the group from from last year? Is there separate? Yeah, I think there's there's always going to be sort of that hurt, but. You know, this game on, on Saturday isn't going to be about the emotion of, of last year. It's going to be about um, what we've built so far in this tournament. And as, as Nogi touched on, you know, um, last year doesn't matter when it comes to finals footy because uh, the team on the day will, will be the one. So, um, yeah, we're all excited for that. Jason, um, you, you obviously went involved in that series last year. From a four-pack perspective, where do you think the biggest evolution, the biggest shifts that, that you've been able to make since then? Um, probably a couple of things. I think that you know we've had some good um, growth in our lineup, both sides of the ball. Um, I think that's been a plus for us, and I think definitely um, the training quality and fixing things on the run has been quite a step up for the boys, and and just uh, not avoiding any hard conversations that need to be had. Um, that, that's a big one for us, and. I think the the players have been tremendous and responded, and you know where we need to be, where we need to be to be fair. So we're happy with um, that progress and how that's come along. There'd be a couple of areas, and I think our carries been good as well. And just in terms of the, um, I guess the different selection tactics, Ireland's probably played their top team right through pool play. You guys obviously rotated a fair bit. Um, <coughs> do you see that being much of a factor in this game? Um, well, look, we like to keep everyone hungry. <laughs> I think it's uh, important that everyone's competing at training, and you know we've given everyone a crack in this World Cup, and you know we're really clear on who our starting lineup is, and you know it's um, it's full full steam ahead for this final, and this is where you want to be. This is where the players want to be in a final. It's where you want to be as a coach, and it's where the All Blacks want to be, and it's a great opportunity that we're looking forward to against the number one team in the world. Um, Christian, for, for all three of you, you talked about hard conversations before and also the fact it's a final. Sean Fitzpatrick, when he was the All Black captain, once very famously said that losing or the fear of failure was a huge motivator for the All Blacks, not the biggest motivator. If we lose in this quarter final, statistically we come home with the worst All Black side that's ever gone to a Rugby World Cup, statistically. Is the fear of failure a question for all three of you? Is the fear of losing and the fear of failure as much of a motivation for you as anything else? Strong question. You're on, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um, the All Black jersey means uh, a lot to us. And we've talked a lot in the last few months around the legacy of the Black jersey and what it, what it means. And you talk about someone like Sean Fitzpatrick. Um, like he probably set the All Black jersey and the legacy alight with what he did. So, you know, we, are, we, are we scared of failure? No. But do we embrace the legacy and what we want to achieve? Yes, and we get excited by that and we walk towards it. I'd like to ask Rico and Aaron the same question, please. Yeah, exactly what, what um, Jace has touched on. You know, we, we are never scared to lose and, um, you know, if there's any sort of questions and, and our belief that's unwavering because we know um, what we have in this group and um, yeah the for for myself the fear of losing doesn't doesn't ever cross my mind um, just the, the, the motivation that um, this group has and sort of that we thrive and the energy sorry that we thrive off each other's is, is motivational um, motivation enough and yeah we don't like to take a sort of glass half empty view on things. Yeah, mine's more, my energy's pushed towards more of the opportunity that is in front of us, the excitement of um, what we can control as a group. If you're held down by the weight of the past, um, you won't be able to do anything, you won't be able to play well, you'll be too scared to do anything, to try things, to trust your instincts. Um, being free 
been energised with intent, um, and there's plenty of intent and want this weekend. So I don't think there's the burden or the statistics or the um, weight on us like that. It's a final at a World Cup for us, and we are ready to go. Marty, can we just great answers? Three great answers. Great Tough question. question. <laughs> great question. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in. I feel like I can't really top that. It's coming off a very deep question there, but um, Aaron, just for you, a word on, um, I guess, just being back in Paris and it feels like there's been definitely a lift and there's many more of us here coming out of that sort of bubble we had back in Lyon from the last two weeks. Um, do you feel at all that there's sort of a lift, um, maybe in pressure or just the general feeling in camp? Yeah, I think we're, as a group, pretty sad to leave Lyon as well. We've had um, six great weeks there. Um, we had a very lovely setup, um, and uh, they were very good to us. But um, all our dreams and aspirations and hopes for this World Cup would have come to Paris, and we're finally here for real. Um, and it's in our control how long we are. But it's great to be here. You can feel the energy. Um, we've already played at that amazing stadium once this year, and we've got another opportunity this weekend. And it's great to see you all, the media and all that, but uh, we just had a lovely training and 20 odd degrees and the energy and the excitement there preparing to play Ireland is, um, is front of mind. It does feel a little bit cooler though this week than it was when we were back in Paris at the start. Um, does that make things a little bit easier, not quite in the mid-30s? Yeah, Leon really put it on. I think it rained once the whole time we were there, so um, yeah, it is what it is. Rugby store, winter sports, so... We're preparing for all conditions this weekend and looks like it might be a bit dewy, so we'll be ready. Can we just bring the mic to the front here, please? Thank you. And I'll come to you, Joe. Hi guys, Ashley here from Off the Ball in Ireland. It's nice to be here. Aaron, I might come to you first. What does revenge look like for you? I know I'm sure it's a win, but it was talked about a bit last week about wanting to get revenge over Ireland. Overall, what does that look like? Um, oh, I don't see it as that, sorry. Um, so my answer will be quite boring. I just see it as a chance to take on the best team in the world at a World Cup. And then as well, are you happy that you're, you're playing Ireland in the quarterfinal? That's how the cards fell. And yeah, I am happy, yep. Rico, what does revenge look like for you? Or is it revenge? Is that the way you look at it? Uh, nah, I think I was, um, yeah, it's not really, a, there's no touch on, it's not really a revenge game. And, um, but the answer to your other question, yeah, we're, we're definitely happy to be playing on it. Um, it's the team we want. Thank you. Joe, this is going to have to be the last one. Sorry, team, we've just run out of time. Chase, a fast start, does it take on extra importance given it's going to be a pretty heavy Irish crowd? Yeah, it will be. They're uh, certainly getting behind it, but we noticed um, in the last couple of games we've played, there's definitely a lot more uh, Kiwis over here now, and um, I'm sure that they'll embrace that. Look, it's um, it's just going to be an unbelievable contest. The atmosphere, I think I've said this just about every media conference, I think the way France are getting behind this World Cup and the crowds have been unbelievable. Just so special to be a part of, and it's um, you know fantastic, and She's going to be um, a massive test match that we are really looking forward to, that we know that um, both fans, sets of fans, will get right behind and be really proud of their teams. And I'm sure that you know both teams will play an entertaining, spectacle rugby because they both want to use the ball. Um, they both love playing the game. They want to play quick. And can't wait. Cool. Thank you so much for coming in.